So I did some checking up on my container garden this morning, and I have to tell you, I think neem oil does more than just uh, disrupt the bug life cycle. I believe it also is a great antifungal. I know it's windy, so I hope you can hear me, but uh, this tomato um, was in really poor condition. This is the one that I got from the big box store, and... Um, it had all kinds of uh, black rod and with neem oil um, most of that um, has kind of disappeared now it hasn't spread even though I took off the affected leaf it hasn't spread at all so I'm really pleased with it in fact um, I've got even more fruit now um, don't know if you can see that guy back there but he's new, and he's actually bigger than the ones that were on there when I first discovered the fungus. The, those guys down there were wrapped in the leaves that have that fungus all over them, and they have not grown that much. But that other guy up there, man, he definitely uh, took me by surprise. So I've also been kind of like pruning back, um, you know, some of the, the leaves that have just been kind of like wandering and the branches that have been wandering out and it's been producing blossoms for me since I've done that. Now this is all stuff that I've been learning from um, you guys on YouTube. Um, and I can't call all the names out, plus I'd probably get half of them wrong, but just, I mean, there are blossoms everywhere now, and before it was just a bunch of leaves that were basically turning brown. While I'm out here, I want to show you this squash. I pared them down in case you noticed there used to be four in each one of these, and now there's just two. And this one has really shot up and it's surpassed the size of this one over here, which used to be the biggest. So when I first got the uh, tomato plant, um, I used this neem oil, and I didn't have any insecticidal soap, so I used a teaspoon of dish soap. I used this peppermint oil, which um, I already had because I um, use a lot of essential oils. And I used about this much water when I shook it all up together. Now, I keep my neem oil inside. Um, so it just doesn't get gunk on it. So um, the house temperature is about 70, 72 ish, which is not um, warm enough for this to actually be liquid. And so it kind of looks like this. You might get some oil out of that that's already liquefied, but it just looks kind of like lard. So at first I was thinking that maybe I got gypped because it just kind of looked gunky. And then um, I was watching a YouTube video and uh, they said you have to run it under uh, some warm or hot water and it will liquefy. I'm going to let that sit in this hot water for a while. Uh, maybe about five minutes. Honestly, it doesn't take that long to, to get... Um, a tablespoon or two liquefied in hot water. Okay, so it's been about four minutes and this water is just over lukewarm. So let's see if we can get at least a teaspoon out of there. Oh yeah, you see that? So when you shake it up, um, it looks like this, kind of like a yellowish tint to it because of the neem. Um, it does have a nice pepperminty smell, but I didn't use much peppermint oil for the fungus. Um, I used that more for the insecticidal benefits. I mean, peppermint oil does repel, you know, a couple of, you know, insects. You know, although, honestly, it, it makes spiders not want to come around, and I kind of want spiders around because they can tackle some of the insects that the neem oil can't handle. But the peppermint oil masks the scent of the different plants and it kind of confuses, you know, certain bugs and they don't get attracted as fast to your individual plants. So I do like that aspect of using the peppermint oil. But it is still 
um, an oil just like the neem oil is, so I would advise not using it in bright blasting sunlight because I think you're going to fry your plants instead of, um, you know, helping them. That's all I have guys, thanks for watching.